in the distant realm of the Netherlands, where every mark is a myth and every speck a legend, there is the Rise Budget Bill. Hey all and welcome to another video. This is my first video with an AMD Ryzen processor, in particular the Ryzen 5 2600. This processor has 6 cores and 12 threads with a 3.9 GHz max boost. This processor I bought in a bundle together with the ROG Strix B450F gaming motherboard. This motherboard has plenty of I.O. and is actually my first motherboard I've ever owned with a USB-C connection. Something that later on in the video you will realize I cannot connect to the case I bought, which is a shame. On top of this motherboard is also an XPG SSD in the NVMe slot of 500GB. This build will be powered by a CX450M power supply. 450 stands for the amount of wattage, it's a modular power supply and an 80 plus bronze unit. A beautiful little black unit. This power supply will be used to power up our AMD R9 380 graphics card. A bit older graphics card that I was able to pick up for only 25 euros. Although this is a bit older, it still comes with 4GB of GDDR5 memory and can actually power up most games. The only thing that is a shame is that driver support is no longer there. So do make sure to download the latest drivers available and expect some smaller or minor issues when powering up some of your games. And for the case, I went for a Chief Tech Apex Air case. It actually comes with a glass side panel and I was able to pick this up new for 75 euros. For the quality that this case is and the sturdiness that you can feel with it, I really think it's a great deal. And now it's time for the build montage. And now, while we're building this, why not hit that subscribe button and show this channel some love. Thank you! After screwing the motherboard down, what I will go ahead is removing these little brackets near the CPU socket as we don't need them for the cooler we're gonna place, and then afterwards it's time to place the CPU. And as you can see here, an AMD CPU has pins on the bottom, so you have to be extremely careful. An Intel CPU actually has these pins on the motherboard. That's quite a big difference if you ask me. After placing the CPU in the motherboard, I will be adding a bit of cooling paste, after which we can go ahead with installing the cooler. While placing the CPU cooler, always make sure you screw it down crosswise to ensure that the cooling paste gets spread evenly underneath. Now that this is done, it is time for the cables, my least favorite part of building any PC. Okay, apart from cable management, I'm gonna be very honest there. Now removing these little brackets to create some space for entering the video card and after that we can screw it down as well. After which we're moving on to the power supply which we'll also screw down after placing it in the correct location. And then guess what? There's even more cables, more to manage. Hmm. And after placing all these parts, we're done. There's no more parts to place. Yeah, for those of you that paid attention, I forgot to buy memory for the PC build. Is it now done? Is this it? Can we not continue? Oh no. Okay, we're now a few days later and there you go, the package arrived, the memory. I had to buy it for an additional 25 euros unfortunately. I went for Corsair Vengeance RAM, DDR4, a dual channel kit of 3200 MHz and in total 16 GB. And now after a few days we can finally turn on this PC. Starting with one of my favorite games we're gonna be testing Counter Strike 2. We'll be testing this at 1080p medium high settings and we're getting a 68 frames per second average here. As you can see, there's some random lag spikes here. I don't know if that's due to the PC or due to the network, but it becomes less during the game, so that's good. After Counter-Strike, I decided to also test Fortnite. I ran it at 1080p on medium settings in performance, and I'm getting an average FPS of 102 frames per second, but quite some drops all the way down to 50 frames per second. 
After which I decided to also test GTA 5. Again 1080p, this time normal settings, I was able to get an average frames per second of 80 with 1% lows of 60 frames per second. Very playable. And the last game I tested was Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Again, 1080p, this time minimum settings, I was able to get an average frames per second of 61 frames. The only thing is the 1% lows are all the way down to 32. At the moment that this happens, well, you just gonna get shot. Yeah, that's my whole experience there, unfortunately. Overall, I think this build turned out really nicely. But honestly, if I really look back on it, I think I kinda cut the corner with the graphics card and I should have gone with a heavier graphics card, such as the RX uh, 6. 1600 I think it's called or for example as I used in my previous build a GTX 1080 that would do this system a lot more justice I would say but okay let's do a quick cost breakdown the motherboard CPU and SSD I bought for 110 the graphics card I was able to buy for 30 power supply 25 memory 25 and the case I bought new for 75 making this total build 265 euros which honestly has amazing performance looks great and has a lot of potential Talking about potential, should we give it some RGB and some liquid cooling? Let me know in the comments and see you hopefully in the next video.